Do you find yourself feeling down or not as happy when winter rolls around? Well, there's actually a scientific theory behind it and it's often called the winter blues. Okay, well, it's actually scientifically called seasonal affective disorder or SAD. Seasonal affective disorder or SAD is a type of depression that's related to changes in seasons. SAD begins and ends at about the same time every year, usually starting in the fall, continuing on into the winter months, and finally subsiding in the spring or early summer. But, you know, to me, that seems like no way to live. You know, you're trying to tell me that I'm going to feel sad starting in September and I'm not going to feel normal again until, say, March or April. You know, that's more than half the year. And that's not even taking into account if anything else happens, like, you know, losing a job or, you know, losing, say, a family member. But before we get into how to get over this feeling, let's talk about the symptoms because nobody ever took an Advil without having a headache first. Some symptoms include feeling depressed for most of the day, basically every day, losing interest or getting bored doing things that you once enjoyed, having a noticeably lower energy level, uh, having trouble sleeping, if you notice changes with your appetite or your weight, if you feel lazy, if you feel sluggish, having a difficult time concentrating. I know, you know, I definitely feel that sometimes. Um, you know, if you feel hopeless, if you feel worthless, or if you feel guilty, or if you have thoughts of death and suicide. But, you know, before we continue, I just want to say that if you are feeling any of these symptoms for, say, a day, you know, every so often, like, it's perfectly normal. Like, everybody doesn't operate at 100% at all times for 365 days out of the year. It's perfectly normal to have, let's call them off days. The problem arises when the feelings are consistently there, and then that's when it might be time to, say, get some professional help, or just listen to some Gary Vee. It'll cost you a lot less too. But what could cause you to have feelings like this? Well, it might have to do with your biological clock, also called your circadian rhythm. This might be related to the reduced level of sunlight in the fall and winter, causing you to feel the effects of the winter blues. One thing you can do about it is to make sure you're getting an adequate amount of light, preferably natural light. If you're working from home, which a lot of people are, considering 2020 and the gifts that it's brought, um, you know, open the curtains, let all the natural light in. Sit by the window, uh, go for a walk, you know, just absorb in as much natural light as you can. It'll help you more than you think. Another reason might be a drop in your serotonin levels. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter or a chemical that your brain produces that affects your mood. You know, some things that you can do to alleviate this or raise your serotonin levels is, is do things you enjoy. You know, read a book, uh, watch a movie, play some video games, you know, do something. Just do anything to take your mind off your mood or let's call it occupy your mind. You know, the change in season can also disrupt your levels of melatonin, which plays a role in your sleep patterns and mood. That's why research shows that you shouldn't be using your phone right before bed because it emits that blue light. And I know you know the blue light that I'm talking about. And basically what the blue light does is it tells your brain that it's time to wake up. But then what you're doing is you're turning over and you're going to bed. So you're basically just confusing your body. So try as much as you can to not be on your phone right before bed. One thing you can do is to turn on the night shift function on, I'm pretty sure it should be on Samsung devices, but I know Apple does have it for sure. Um, Apple first introduced night shift all the way back in 2016 on iOS 9.3, and then it was eventually brought to the max in 2017. But is night shift actually helping you sleep? You know, there was a new study, and according to the Light Research Center, your sleep may still be at risk. Researchers recruited 12 young adults to go on and use an iPad between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. on four separate nights under four separate conditions. The goal of the study was to study the amount of melatonin suppression that was taking place, resulting from three different night shift settings on the iPad. One of them had night shift disabled, another one was set to less warm, and the last one was set to more warm. All three significantly suppressed melatonin, but the night shift mode only suppressed it slightly less. 
So basically what was happening is, say you have a headache and you take an Advil, but it was only like half a dose of an Advil. So your headache didn't subside, it just, it was less intense, let's call it that. The study found no big difference between the two levels of night shift. One of the big takeaways from the study was that it's not the color temperature of the screen, but it's also the screen brightness. That's why it's widely agreed upon that we should be limiting our use of electronic devices in the evening and we should stop using them at least two hours before bedtime. You know, if you are finding that you are having trouble sleeping, then there is an over-the-counter pill that you can take and it's basically an artificial melatonin pill. I do want you to be aware though that your body can get addicted to it and then you're gonna rely on it. Then you're gonna need it every night, which means you're gonna be spending money on it. And you shouldn't be. Really and truly, it should only be used on those occasional nights when you know, you're turning over and you're turning over again and you feel restless. That's when you should be using the melatonin pill. You know, personally, I sleep with my iPad beside me playing some type of white noise so I can fall asleep. But like, if it's raining, then I just open the window and listen to the rain. And you know, if you know how it feels to fall asleep to the rain, then you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you, and then you get that nice breeze coming in. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. It's literally just the perfect temperature, just like, say, Goldilocks. And especially if it's on a night where you know that you don't have to go to work the next day. So like, you know you have the next day off. I mean, man, those sleeps just hit different. And you know, nobody can ever tell me different. But you know what a big difference is? How much you wished you were older when you were a kid compared to now. And as always, thanks for watching.